How would you sum up the week of practice in the first game? It's been a good week. Our, our guys have done consistently what we've asked them to do. They prepared well. They're still getting used to some of the things we want them to do, like the way we want them to prepare, how we're going to approach practices. Uh, so it's never going to be as clean the first time around as down the road, but it's probably the best first week uh, I've seen coming in with a new team. Uh, they're trying to do everything we ask them to do, and I, I think they're ready. What do you want or ask of your guys the last like 48 hours before a kickoff? Uh, just to be preparing their bodies as well as they can. We give them a lot of opportunity to recover and be fresh for the game and then preparing their minds as much as they can. Want them going to class, but also want them grinding on game plan to make sure that they can play as uh, clean a game as they can. It can be a long wait when you've got a 7 p.m. kickoff. How do you approach Saturday? What do you do with them over the course of the day? Uh, we'll get them up in the morning, get them moving, uh, have them do something so that their, their bodies are more prepared for the night. Uh, then the afternoon's kind of theirs to sit around and watch college football. Um, then when it's appropriate, we'll get them back over here and, and start preparing for the game. Um, sometimes it's a long wait when it's a night game, but night games in Memorial Stadium are pretty special too. Did you uh, make a decision on captains yet? No, we're going to actually meet on that today. Um, my guess is we probably won't end up with captains just for the whole year. It's probably going to be on a game by game basis. <coughs> Scott, what have you seen out of um, Aaron Williams coming back from that injury and just what he can provide, you know, at this point? Um, Aaron's done a good job. You know, he, he wasn't able to do, be at full speed during spring. Uh, he, he was kind of non-contact for a lot of fall camp, so it's kind of hard to compare him. Um, since he's been back, he's been doing a really good job. So competition's been open at every position since we got here, and it'll continue to be open. We're going to play the guys that are playing the best, and uh, we're all anxious to see him at full speed out there uh, doing what we know he can do. Given what Akron does well, uh, what, what's two or three things you'd really like to see your team do Saturday against them? I want to see us execute. Uh, that's first and foremost. Um, you know, I think our team has done about as much as they can in nine months to prepare without playing a game. Um, but you never really know on some things until it's game day. Uh, there's hitting going on. You're playing another team. Um, we got to go out and execute and, and play a good game and take care of the football and, and create turnovers on the defensive side. So. I think we've done about everything we can to get ready to this point, but inevitably there's still some things that are going to happen in a game that we need to be prepared for. Will you um, adjust the, the, the frequency with which you run Adrian Martinez based on the quarterback depth? No, I'm going to call a game based on what we need to do to win. Um, if we're getting beat and the game's over, or we're winning and the game's over, then uh, we'll, we'll rethink that. But um, when the game's hot and going, uh, we're going to call what we need to to move the ball. What have you seen out of Akron that uh, sort of impresses you, and how are you guys going to counter that? I think Akron's well coached. Uh, you can tell by how disciplined their players are. They're, they're where they're supposed to be. They know what they're doing. Um, I think they got good talent. Uh, they, they play hard. Um, all the signs of, of a good team. There, there's a reason they were in their conference championship game last year. So we need to be able to match uh, intensity and execution. Uh, if we do that, then I think we got a shot. freshman quarterbacks and young quarterbacks that they feel like are capable of playing. You have one. What is it about young quarterbacks around the country now that are allowing them to be game ready as true freshmen? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's changed or not. I, I don't know the history on how many used to play compared to now. Um, early enrollees have changed it a little bit. It's hard to be ready as a freshman unless you've had that spring ball. That makes a big difference. Um, I think maybe high school programs are, are have evolved and doing a better job of training guys' uh, strength and also understanding of football. Uh, I think guys are coming into college a little more ready. But you know, our, our situation, we didn't have a choice. We had a redshirt freshman or a true freshman. Now we have a, a true freshman, a walk-on redshirt freshman, and a true freshman walk-on. So um, that's the hand we got dealt. And um, I feel great about it. The, the guys we have are doing a great job. So. Um, there's going to be some mistakes, some freshman mistakes. That's inevitable. When my first year here, I made some junior mistakes. Uh, the first time you're out there, it's just a little different. But I think we got the type of guys with the right mentalities that they'll um, make those mistakes, take it in stride, and learn from it and move on. Do you like how Andrews responded to the whole process? I mean, initially when he was going to be the third team guy, and now when he finds out he, he 
got moved up, just how he's handled everything. Yeah, Andrew's done a great job handling everything. And uh, I went to him yesterday during practice and said, this is the best day you've had in a long time. And he said, Coach, that's because I'm getting reps again. So I, I think that's the key for him is making sure we're getting him enough reps to be ready. And I've already seen the improvement. What is it? Uh, you have some young players in some important positions, you know, obviously quarterback, wide receiver. Um, what do you do to keep them kind of focused and not get too overexcited by something like the tunnel walk? Uh, we're doing it. I don't think you can help that. Uh, if Husker Vision's doing their job, I'm going to be jacked up. So uh, I don't know how you can tell a guy running out there for the first time not to be. But we just got to make sure we're focused on what we do. We do a lot of things during practice to try to create distractions with with music, guys want to dance, with sudden changes. Um, I want all our guys to be having fun and then when it's time to play, be able to flip a switch and dial in. And uh, we train them for that. Uh, Saturday will be a test with that. So you have the area codes on the helmets here too. If you find that players kind of respond to those, those little things you can do like that. Yeah, I always thought as a player, uh, all my teammates wanted to play for three things. The first was the team, if you have the right kind of team. The second is the name on the back of your jersey, your family, who you represent. And kids are really proud of where they're from. So uh, I don't think that takes away from our team first thing, but being able to represent uh, your hometown matters to these kids too. So uh, I think they liked it today. How have you seen um, Adrian grow since you've announced him as a starter? You know, even, even just this week, I guess. You know, anytime you're in a competition for a, for a spot, um, you're confident, but you're, you're a little anxious to find out if you're the guy or not. And since he's become the guy, I've seen his confidence grow even more, knowing it's his show. Um, that's going to just be a continuing process. He's, he's going to have to continue to gain confidence through good plays and decisions. Um, there's going to be some bad ones, too. Uh, we know it's going to happen. We're going to live with it. And uh, as, as time goes on, there's going to be more good ones than bad ones. Anything else?